So, we are all sitting down, that means that we are ready. I want to ask you, first of all, a hello, good afternoon, or good morning, not sure what time is it. I want to ask you a question. Uh, actually, I want to ask you if you can help me. Uh, I'm very bad at tracking the time, so <laughs> if you could take your uh, mobile phone, yeah? <laughs> and then you take your timer, and you put the timer 60 minutes ahead in the future. So we will have like a musical composition of uh, phone this alarms. This is great. At the end, if you want. So <laughs> what a great thing. Now I want to see you, uh, see all of you taking your cell phone and putting on the, the alarm. Mm -hmm. Or otherwise we would be talking since forever. But also so we will <laughs> have a nice. Yes. Right? Different alarms. <laughs> So yeah. please put the alarm 60 minutes on from now, please. What a great idea. And when I have checked that the alarm is set, we are going to start. Shall we also do it? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, please go ahead. I forgot on my phone, but. <laughs> <laughs> and while we are setting our, our alarms, just to track the time of this conversation, uh, let me start by introducing a platform which is called We Are uh, Europe. Uh, it's a project that now it's in its sixth year. It's mm. been running for six years, and this project, this platform, yes. is a European Johanna? Union funded platform that gathers eight festivals from all over Europe. And Olaf is going to help me if I forget some festival, uh, which are. Um, Elevate Festival from Graz in Austria, uh, Reworks Festival in Thessaloniki in Greece, which is happening as we speak. Uh, we are sharing the dates. It's Today's Art from The Hague in the Netherlands, uh, Nuit Sono from Lyon in France, uh, Unsound from Krakow in Poland, uh, and Insomnia. Insomnia Tromso. from Tromso in Norway, uh, Sonar Festival, Barcelona, Spain, but also here in uh, Istanbul, and I'm forgetting a festival. Uh, Nuit Sonor. Nuit Sonor, yeah, Lyon. I said. So That's it. I think that I haven't forgotten anyone. No. Perfect. And so, Siopop mm. in Cologne, Germany. So these are the eight festivals, and during these three years, we have been collaborating together in co-curating our festivals on the music mm. side, but also on the conference side, in the talks, panels, and other activities that don't fit under the concert umbrella. And so we are uh, almost closing the project in its sixth year, and a good occasion is to just catch up with a few people, a few artists that in different periods of the projects have participated in some of these activities that we have been making together. So now I'm going to introduce everyone and I'm going to start from the very end. You are very far away, Cora. Yeah. Uh, she's Cora Novoa. She's a music producer uh, from uh, Galicia, but she's based in Barcelona, Spain. Hello, how are you, Cora? Fine, happy to be here. And mm. it's my first time in Istanbul um, to share this panel with all of you. And Cora is going to perform later on, so you, you better not miss her show. And then we have Ali Demirel, which you know because uh, he's like a Sonar Istanbul staple, right? Yeah, <laughs> resident. A resident. Mm. Uh, he is uh, from Turkey, based in Berlin. He's a visual artist and an architect. Um, yeah. Then we have uh, Lea Fabricant, she's also an artist, multidisciplinary, she's a visual artist, musician. Uh, we saw her yesterday uh, in a performance, fantastic. And Lea is from Jerusalem, based in Berlin right now. And she was performing together with Tariq Barri, uh, who is also an artist, musician, visual artist, uh, from the Netherlands, also based in Berlin. Hello, Tarek, how are you? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, we don't have an artist, we have a festival organizer who is Olaf van Winden. He is the organizer of today's art festival in The Hague. He's from Africa, uh, lives in The Hague and beyond, and other places. Awesome. Huh? 
How are you, Olaf? I'm doing very good. Very mm -hmm. happy to be here. Third, <laughs> third time in Istanbul for Sonar and, and Digilo. Uh, happy to see you guys. <laughs> and then I'm going to introduce myself. I'm going to be your host. I'm Antonia Folguera. I'm curator at Sonar Plus D in Barcelona. And I'm very happy to be here. Uh, with our guests, and I'm very happy to be hosting a talk in this amazing installation yeah. by mm -hmm. Helen Blanken. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we will get inspired by the installation, and hopefully we will get, we will be inspired by by other things. But let's get the conversation rolling, and I'm going to start now all the other way around. I'm going to start with Olaf, and uh, you organize a super cool festival in The Hague called Today's Art. And I was wondering now, after these months, almost two years, actually, we've counted, and the last Sonar Istanbul happened 17 months ago. So it has taken 17 months to have something like a normal festival. And I would like to ask all of, what are you planning? What are you doing? Um, what's going on right now for good, today's uh, art? Good question, because... Um, Actually, for us, it's the same. Our last festival was in 2019. Um, and since then, uh, we have been developing ideas, brainstorming, thinking what is our role, what is our position in this ecosystem? How do we keep this ecosystem alive? Like, uh, uh, what is important right now when you cannot present? At least you can still maybe produce or collaborate with artists that there is a, a form of continuation. Um, but it, it has been, uh, I think, for all of us, uh, and, and, and actually not, not even here on stage, but for every single one person of us, it, it was a crazy year. Um, I think research was, was, a, was a, a good direction to go, to come up with new uh, ideas for the future. Um, I was personally hoping that this, let's call it big conflict, uh, would rise a bit the consciousness of humanity uh, in, in this whole thing. Like, I, I believe that Sometimes, uh, Helene Blanken said it in the previous talk as well, maybe you need a big catastrophe before things will change. Um, and now we are slowly uh, uh, starting again, and uh, uh, it's, it's fascinating to see. Like last night, uh, seeing people dancing, uh, meeting each other again after a long time. Um, this, is, this is an amazing feeling, and uh, the, the power of being together uh, is, is coming back, and I'm looking forward to that. At a certain point, it seemed like it would never come back. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's even here with us for a longer time, uh, and, and we, we are already adapting, like uh, covering our faces and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it definitely changes something in, in uh, social behaviors. And, and, uh, but, you know, we are distancing, we are isolating ourselves. Uh, on the other hand, I've been communicating much more than ever before with the rest of the world. Um, and uh, I also realized, like, uh, a lot of festival organizers and, and even artists, um, yes, we streamed our content and we tried to still communicate uh, with an audience. Uh, it, it's far from ideal. Um, but I think it's still super important because I realized um, there is a lot of, let's say, fans of, of our festivals around the world in, in non-Western countries. They don't have the possibility to visit us. Uh, but now, because everyone opened up in hybrid forms, they had a possibility to participate. And I think this is a very important thing uh, that the Internet was with us during these crazy times. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and I I wanted to speak a bit with Lea and with Tarek. Uh, the last time that I saw your performance, it was in The Hague in 2019. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yesterday I saw that it had certainly evolved a lot. It was different, like there was uh, something in the sounds, but also in, in the visual content that uh, reminded me of that performance uh, two years ago. But it was definitely different. Uh, so, how, what have you been doing since then, these months? Have you been working on this specific performance? Have you been researching? What have you been done? Um, well, I, this is uh, this question also relates to the uh, question you asked Olaf 
which I wanted to um, to really to also myself relate to, which was whether we were uh, addressing each and every one of us as artists or as human beings, whether we were uh, going into research or taking some time off. I think that we were all. That it wasn't a question. We were all for this. This time forced us, whether we wanted it or not, to go into research, to go into doubting ourselves, which is also research. What we're doing, what we're doing as pres as creators, as expressors within a group, in which platforms do we show ourselves? How does it feel when it's taken away? What is missing? very isolated time. It's brutal. <laughs> so in a way, I do believe that that was to what Helen was saying. <laughs> uh, it, there was, it was, it was a catastrophe for some more, for some less, but it was already a certain, at least catastrophical situation which forced us into research. Um, with that said, uh, whether things will come back to normal or not, I think that things never go back. I think that things only in evolve. And from now on, how we're presenting ourselves, which also relates to how we evolved in our artistic project, it was uh, very much, um, yeah, it, again, this uh, question of research forced us to, to, to adapt. So there was, uh, if it is the online, uh, um, so for sure it is easier to communicate with the rest of the world, but for me personally also, for the, the art that I do or that we do, we definitely had to adapt because as a live performance, we suddenly had to limit ourselves to the screen, which was insane. How do you share an experience and keep the, the idea of live? What does it mean live? What is it right now at the same time or is it sharing it in a room? Is that live? That's what I think. So I think that that also, this question made us, at least from my opinion, concentrate more on, not on the um, fine, tuning the preciseness, but being able to feel more, it forced me, luckily, to be more present in our project, to, be, to, to express myself in a more present way and relate to what I'm doing and to the way that we're sharing it with the audience. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I was wondering about this research, like uh, what have you been doing? Uh, what things are you tweaking? Um, what have you learned? Um, yeah, a lot. Um, when the pandemic uh, properly hits, 2019, that's a year, everything is a little bit fuzzy in terms of time and everything. But yeah, 2019, which is almost feels like an abstract number. Uh, but then, at that point, uh, we were actually just getting a bunch of nice um, uh, gigs that all of a sudden, poof, all of them couldn't uh, happen anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that was a shame because um, there is the, there's also a lot of research in live performing, uh, basically. And there's, uh, as I often would put it, uh, I really think that uh, you are, in any case, a human being is always a human being within a context. You are, I'm this person with you, I'm this person with you, I'm this person when I'm rehearsing with Leia uh, in, inside, uh, inside our little home, uh, or inside uh, this, how do you call it, studio? Yeah, there's a studio home, basically. In any case, there you, I also feel like a different person, but also on stage, I again feel like a different person. And this person on stage, these two persons on stage, needs to learn. But the only place where this person uh, exists is on the stage. So we need to learn during performance. I hope that makes sense, what I'm saying. <laughs> Through practicing. Yeah, so we need to practice. Through practicing live. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Not yeah. just practice at home. Of course, you practice at home to make sure that you're better live. But yeah. some types of practice you can only do while being live. And it was a shame that that was taken away from us, this opportunity to now finally do that a little bit more. Uh, but uh, 
it's, it's not all bad because uh, we did uh, make some uh, video for Fact Magazine, for instance, where we were really thinking, well, because, uh, yeah, how do we translate what we do? We, uh, yeah, we thought it would be a good experiment in any case to try and translate it as best as we can to a video that you can just play on YouTube. Um, that gave us the opportunity to maybe edit you know, the source material or uh, fine tune it or do rehearsals again and again and make different tries of the same piece and then, you know, we could uh, go much more in certain details whereas if we are just doing a performance live, it's more just this one go and it is what it is. Um, and this was actually a very nice type of research to see, okay, what happens if you really look at all these things in details, what is missing, mm -hmm. what can we shave and everything, what can we shave in, in these edges and on that edge to make it really perfect and then take to take this experience back into the spontaneous live thing. I really like that, yeah. uh, that's, you know, that play between a plan, precision, but also live and if, sh if things go wrong, then things go wrong and we try to make it right again somehow. And I like both sides and if they can meet each other, which I think that we've managed to do a couple of times now, <laughs> 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 uh, then I think that it can be really beautiful and can be really exciting. Also because I think an audience feels that same tension between the plan and <coughs> where life happens and then make a new plan. And yeah. But also Act for us, it's yeah. very exciting. It's yes. amazingly exciting. It yeah. was, it's if if I may just shortly, yeah. it's been uh, since um, the the pandemic we had three recently three live shows. Each one of them was different, of course, but each and every one of them was amazingly emotional. <laughs> it was just emotional. I was filled with. Um, yeah, it, and it feels am amazing. Yeah, uh, you were you were talking a lot about uh, things that happen live in real time that things might uh, go wrong, and you were also talking about perfection. And I was wondering, like, the work that you do is very very live. Like, you take these images with the camera and you process them, and everything happens a lot in real time. How is it when you get very perfectionist with something that doesn't have this real-time component that I think that it's super important in the work that you do? It's challenging. <laughs> it's also challenging because for each one of us, there is different, the, the thing of the perfection co expresses itself in, in, in the different way. So it's, it's double time challenging because we have to find um, uh, like uh, in between compromise, but a, a free compromise also between the both of us, because for Tariq it would be the, um, we also the way that we express ourselves and the way that we, our parts in this thing are, are very, very different. Um, it is a very good question, which actually I cannot answer. I don't know, uh, I think we will, I, I, maybe we will find an answer for this, <laughs> but maybe this is the show. This is a show of how to, expre to express something of now, which is actually completely dependent on everything, on the room, on the people, on the moment, on me, on how I slept, how he slept, how, what did I eat yesterday? Everything, how to, to relate all of this into a perfect space, uh, perfect uh, tools of at least to express whatever it is, to have it just fine-tuned to be expressed fully. Yeah. I can also add to that that uh, on the on the technical level, I feel that I have a, have a nice distinction between perfection and in, in improvisation, in that. Um, for instance, when what you see uh, yesterday during our performance, uh, this was not. Um, we didn't think very specifically how do we want the visuals to, to be, for instance. We didn't think about that, but we were very much more thinking how do we, uh, what kind of system are we creating that creates both sound and visual? What kind of uh, changes in sound should produce which types of changes in the visuals? And because we've been so much working on this um, uh, and, and fine tuning, uh, yeah, 
these, these specific aspects, really how the system works, as, uh, as it became more and more fine-tuned and it seemed more and more like the sounds were making sense with the visuals and the other way around, and the, the tweak and the changes within all seemed to be merging together, uh, at some points, uh, more and more, it started happening that whatever kind of weird combination was being made between sounds and visuals, somehow it always seems to, seems to match up in a way that we didn't even anticipate before. That completely before. Sh surprised us yeah. every time. We were like, It's like, how does yeah, oh, this even be made? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And how it sounds within the space, how the images are, so it is... Yeah. yeah. And so there's the sense of perfection within how the system is created, how it should operate, but then what is done with the system is much more free again. Yeah. But still also there is importance to have a plan, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> also to play with it, but also otherwise you get too lost in all the possibilities. Very true. Cool. <laughs> yeah. But it's, I guess it's part of the magic, like uh, working with what you have, with what you feel, yeah. and with uh, the feelings and the energy that you receive from the people yeah. in the room, which I think that you are all like very, very focused, like listening uh, with your ears wide open. So <laughs> thank you very much for this. <laughs> and then let's go for... Uh, uh, Ali, Ali, architect, the visual artist, uh, he, one of the things that he's m perhaps most best known is for having collaborating a lot during uh, the visual work for Richie Hotin, but also like for works in which, and I think that here perhaps we can, we can refer back to what Helen Blanken was saying at the previous, uh, at the previous panel, that a lot of the work that you do, it's very photographic. It depicts nature. It depicts sometimes uh, destruc destruction, like lots of uh, apocalyptic scenes, but also nature in, his, in its most raw essence. So what have you been doing with your images and, and your work capturing nature and apocalypse during this time? Yeah, I mean, um, so my adventure with nature, my focus on nature is actually um, developing even more uh, since the, this pandemic uh, hit. Um, actually, for me, like in my artistic career, timing-wise, this pandemic came, uh, it didn't hit me too bad because that was already a time, a period that I was uh, planning to take a break from uh, intense uh, live shows and touring and uh, focus on my next chapter in my artistic career, what I would do after this apocalyptic <laughs> uh, videos that I did. Uh, and my uh, target was uh, more pure nature, uh, focus on pure nature, even taking out the, this abandoned, any trace of human, you know, mm -hmm. nothing human. And uh, the subject I choose uh, was uh, this uh, Iwakura, the um, rock formations that uh, the Shinto believe uh, find uh, sacred. So it was actually a perfect occasion for me to <laughs> work on uh, that and the, you know, um, the whole environment uh, uh, made sense uh, for this uh, subject. Um, but yeah, like um, I'm still working on it, so I don't know uh, where it will go. It's a, you know, it's a long journey. Um, it was a bit hard because like, uh, so I had also this uh, uh, dilemma, is it the right word? I don't know, but like, um, you know, because I was planning to reduce the live shows, which I do, but I didn't actually think like cutting it all the way, uh, which was a bit hard. Um, like first one year, maybe it was not hard. Uh, and I uh, refused um, all the offers to make uh, online performances, uh, streaming and stuff, or like uh, digital VR spaces, uh, ex VR experiences. That doesn't mean that I don't believe they are uh, uh, you know, I, I'm not saying that you cannot do cool things with that, uh, but I'm saying that the subjects that I work is not uh, fit there. 
uh, I didn't want to make any compromise because when you put something on uh, digital media, YouTube or stream and things, you know, people, we learned from statics that 80% of the people watch them on their phone and they skip it, you know, so I don't, this is not how you uh, perceive the work I do at the moment. So I refused it totally. Um, so I was a bit left with nothing, uh, which hit me a little bit, I must admit, this last summer. I had my summertime sadness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a bit depressive. But um, yeah, I'm like, but I also like my position is a bit like a uh, yeah, uh, pessimist, this, this, this dystopian. <laughs> so like uh, Elif before was saying, you know, she, I'm, I'm amazed how optimist she is, you know, and I think this is actually how the, the target, the, the, the aim like to achieve that optimism is perfect. Yeah, and that's my, but right now I choose to take the person, the pessimist, uh, Someone has to be pessimist. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. definitely. Someone and, has uh, to. <laughs> yeah, so I take that role. <laughs> and uh, actually, um, and if you ask me what we are having right now, it's nothing. It's just the beginning. Like if I talk about being pessimistic, <laughs> this is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, coming. <laughs> Look, it's beautiful, like we are speaking, and I see you, you touch me. Yes, <laughs> I will touch you again. <laughs> yeah, it was about time that we could speak together again and touch each other again. Yeah. Oh, oh, after a year seeing each other through screens and everything, and socializing a lot with the world, as Olaf was saying. Cora, uh, let's catch up with you now. Like. Uh, she's, she's going to perform tonight, like she's going to premiere a show that she has been rehearsing for the past months as a collaboration with uh, a music school in Barcelona and some amazing musicians. So tell us a bit all about it. Well, this is uh, one of the most exciting projects uh, that I made a long time ago and I think in my artistic career because I learned a lot sharing with the, the, the students of the, this school and also to be supported by Sonar Festival and We Are Europe. And I really appreciate to have this opportunity because uh, in the middle of a pandemic year, I was creating new stuff, new ideas, working in a storytelling because the, uh, the, the main, uh, for me, one of the mo most important things in my in my music is to tell a story, no? And we work and focus in topics like dystopia, the metaverse, and arti artificial intelligence. And we build like a history with the tracks and with the lyrics, and also with the productions. And I really enjoyed it. And also we try when first we create all, all the music and later, we uh, build the life and also another layer of visuals with uh, a visual artist from, from Madrid. And we are premiering, premiering today at Sonar Hall, so I'm very nervous, but I'm super happy to, to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to ask you, since, uh, since Ali brought up the topic that you said, I refuse to do anything online because it doesn't make sense for the work that I do, and I think that it's awesome, like that you know what you stand for, and it's like, this is not good for me, I don't do it. How about you, Cora? Have you been doing uh, online performances? Uh, how did you feel about it? Mm, I was uh, more experi uh, experimenting with, for example, different formats like NFTs. For example, in next November, I will release with in, on Turbo Recordings, on Tiga's label, uh, my second release, and we built also a 360 zero uh, uh, project with uh, different assets. Also, we will launch a NFT and a field, an augmented reality filter. And I was working with different tools that in the past I didn't, I, I didn't imagine. No, I can't imagine to, to working with all these tools. And and I'm on that way. No. 
I also play some lives, but just a few of them, not, not playing live, like more DJ sets, okay? Just a couple of them. But now I'm, for example, uh, exper experimenting with, uh, with DAO, with all these de decentralization projects that are happening in the network. And I'm, I, I really like to work in this inter intersection of art and, and, and technology. Actually, those kind of technologies have opened new doors for many artists that, like you, have felt curious about them. Hmm. Um, I wonder about uh, Tarek and Lea. Uh, what do you think about that kind of uh, environments, let's say the metaverse, or uh, putting out some work as, a, as an NFT? Is it for you or like Ali, you say, this is not for us? Um, I'm actually remarkably ignorant about a lot of these things. Like I had to ask Olaf, I think yesterday, what the metaverse was. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm, I'm, um, I'm sometimes not really the finger on the pulse or how they call it. I'm not very much hip to everything that's going on. NFTs, I do know about. I even released one at some point. Mm -hmm. um, six editions sold one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's very much just, just a little bit trying out and a little bit touching it. Uh, and I don't really have very, very clear opinions on uh, where it's going. I do know there's a bunch of people saying that Ethereum is apparently environmentally uh, un uh, unfriendly, um, which I believe. And then people are saying that uh, NFTs also add a lot of uh, you know, ecological impact to that. There's discussions about that. I don't even know for sure how much of this is absolutely true or not. But in any case, I thought just to be safe, I'll do my um, uh, NFT uh, on uh, the Tezos blockchain, which is um, a type of blockchain, which is proof of stake instead of proof of work, which basically means way more energy efficient. And that's just cool in general. I think more energy efficient sounds good. <laughs> um, so, uh, so that's where I released it. But um, yeah, I didn't really go very deep into it. Um, I find the whole space strange. I don't know exactly who the buyers are of all these things. Then again, I also haven't really done a lot of research. So I'm not even expressing uh, a dislike to it. It's more like it's all kind of unknown to me. But I think from what I see around me, also the people that know a lot about it are wondering, we don't know what this is. What does ownership mean? If there's no copyright attached to it. What kind of abstract game are we playing here? Then again, isn't every game, including money itself, abstract? So there's all these, everything is uh, very, very unclear. Um, but one thing that I do know is that I think that being against NFTs is dumb, and I think that being completely for NFTs is dumb as well. That's <laughs> <laughs> completely right. Yeah, yeah just <laughs> like, like it's, it's a new thing. Of course, it's going to be weird and strange, and of course, some of it isn't going to make sense. And I think it, in any case, even if I'm not going to be the one doing exploring, I think, yes, absolutely, this needs to be explored. And of course, cryptocurrencies uh, have amazing potential for the future and all kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm not an expert, but I do think that it needs to be, especially by those people who are very critical against it, uh, sometimes you see them just completely turning away. And I think that's a shame because we need those people to be right in the middle of it, you know, to, to make sure it doesn't go wrong. It's a bit like this, the, the discussion of uh, um, in, in the 50s, 60s when video art came and media art. It took a long time before it was accepted as, uh. a, as a serious art form. Yeah. Um, uh, now with, with all these new technologies, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, you name it. Um, of course, things are not perfect yet, but like you said, uh, it needs time, it needs space to experiment. And I think this, actually this specific period that we had uh, behind and, and maybe still are a bit in, um, is, uh, is opening it, it doors in this direction. And personally, I'm very interested in this, let's say, hybrid digital world next to a physical one. It will never replace, like there is no replacement for the, the physical meeting and, and being together. However, um, Ali was saying also like putting content on YouTube and, and seeing the, the statistics that only a uh, little amount of people are watching it on, on proper screens and things like that. I think we are behind uh, in the art world. We are still using internet in a very one dimensional way. Uh, YouTube is our main channel. That's quite sad. Um, um, and, and I agree myself, you know, you see a life, whether it's live or pre-recorded, 
um, you, you see the content and, and very soon your attention drops and you do something else. But look at the gaming industry. Uh, gamers are gaming for hours and hours and hours and I think they, they are far more advanced than we are um, in that field. I think this, these hybrid spaces, metaverses, uh, things again will never replace but it needs development and, and this is the moment I think for artists also to start diving into these uh, opportunities. To not replace again the, the physical side and to not try to make a copy in, in digitally but to come up with something new. And next to it, I think also a new economic model maybe that comes out of it, related to the NFTs and, and related to, um, um, like we see that what we were doing before, specifically in festivals, became quite unsustainable. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, maybe this is a, this is a new platform uh, to have more equal revenue models also outside of the non-Western world, like in, in, in countries in, in Africa or in Asia or Middle East, something like that. Um, I'm, I'm, I used this year to research very deeply and I'm actually very proud to announce here on stage that we have uh, a new collaboration with the Deco Collective uh, and we will start uh, diving very deep into building it, into building also like a whole tokenomics around it um, and, and to, uh, yeah, to have a, a beautiful new space for the future uh, next to the physical environment. That is great news and also it's great news that uh, platforms like this appear specifically for art because... Which collective? I didn't understand. Deco. 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 Yeah. And what is that? Uh, they, they, it's, a, it's a collective of uh, audiovisual artists from Istanbul. They're based in, in, uh -huh. in, uh, in Turkey. Um, when, when we were diving into these metaverses, there's a lot of examples, but it's very scattered. Uh, sometimes there are um, uh, examples that you need a very heavy gaming computer, or you need a very fast internet, and this is exactly against what we want to do. We want to make things accessible. Yes. And then we, we found, um, uh, through this research, we found what, what Deco is working on. They have a, a platform, um, uh, called Metaspace um, and, and we saw their developments and we were like this is interesting uh, it's interesting not only for performances but also for visual arts and for conferences uh, what is missing in this one dimensional way we consume the art is there is no interaction and what we're trying to do in, in a digital space or in a hybrid space is to bring back this interaction uh -huh. um, and um, uh, yeah, so a whole new world opened up for me. You asked me yesterday what Metaverses was. I asked another guy two weeks ago what Metaverse <laughs> was. And then suddenly, <laughs> like, wow, <laughs> shit, there is, a, there, there is something big happening. Um, and this curiosity, I think this is what we always try to do from the, the, the platform I represent from today's art is to be in the avant-garde, to try to find new, uh, new, new streams or, or artists working with new technologies. This is the same. I, I find this really interesting, and uh, I'm, I, I decided to focus on that uh, mm -hmm. deeper um, and to see what the possibilities are. It's interesting because in, in this way, if you provide that kind of platform, you're going to invite artists to work within this environment that has its own rules. One thing is to work for a flat screen. Another thing is to work for a live... Uh, live performance situation with has its rules. Another thing is like, I don't know, working with installation or with super high resolution images like, like Ali in, in his videos and his photography. And uh, it's very nice that there are possibilities that we don't even imagine that are starting to appear about new formats in which we will experience art and I say experience because I don't dare to say watch. <laughs> I don't dare to say listen. I don't dare to say touch or smell because that kind of senses are not uh, well implemented yet uh, into, into art. But I don't know. I would like to know how uh, do you feel, each of you, about these possibilities of working uh, differently in another kind of environment? 
silence. <laughs> I can, I can, I can um, try to answer this one. You know, when you build an exhibition in a real space, yeah. you, or, or you're thinking of, of the scenography of a theater, uh, as a curator, you, you see the, the possibilities and the, not, the, the things that are not possible, and then you start to build. I think uh, um, diving into these hybrid forms is the same kind of approach. You have possibilities and you have things you cannot do in there. Uh, and like I said before, we should not try to repeat what's happening in the physical world. Um, that's why we actually want to work very bottom up with artists to research this further. Um, um, how do we consume art? Uh, like the traditional way in a museum is you, you look at the painting and, and I think the last two, three decades art became immersive and, and interactive and, and now uh, 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 digital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it was in a way also I was asking because uh, for instance both with uh, uh, Ali and Tariq and Leah that you uh, either visualize sound or sonify image like your work, it's kind of synesthetic in a way. You two work together, Ali, you work with musicians that you either visualize their sounds or they score uh, your videos. Uh, and it's like um, about having the possibility to expand what you do in a perceptual way, that you can do more things than watch or, or listen and try to, uh, I don't know, uh, mix this yeah senses together um, I it's a, it's a <coughs> very very interesting question for for me that I've been uh, also as we are discussing this and obviously through um, through this pandemic time and realizing that uh, uh, adaptation slash compromise slash development all are one if I want to keep on creating and uh, on the this is from one side on the other side what Ali said about uh, having a clarity of of this does not fit not because I'm being dogmatic and this is no 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 <laughs> <laughs> but because not it is a choice or the way that we express ourselves in the end of it is a choice. As, as an expressor, you have to own it also and to know it and to feel at ease in it and not to feel also pressured because of all kinds of circumstances and restrictions and so on. With that said, um, as you were talking right now and asking this question, I was thinking for our act, for example, that I could even... Um, as it is very, uh, um, so sound is influencing the uh, image, image is influencing the sound, but there is this major element of the space, also of the virtual space in which this is all created. And so um, I was thinking, just as an idea, I could, I could even, uh, how interesting it would be to be creating, to having this, this, uh, creation within a space, but as, as a viewer, that the viewer would be able to actually have an in impact on what we are saying. So there is the holiness of what we're saying. And of course, it can't be, okay, now let's make it completely pixelated, or now let's make it uh, rappy. I don't know what, if you can it's even do that. That would be yeah. cool. Uh, but um, it's a bit what all of was saying is that mm, many things they miss interactivity, and yeah. in that kind of environment, like the the interesting thing is like that the in the in VR they don't say the user or, vi or viewer they say the visitor that has agency in this world yes. that you have created and that you are able yeah. to interact with it or change but it yeah. or but it is also very scary because I have to admit that a lot of those things that I am seeing, I also, mm, I not, it's very, I haven't, personally, I, I haven't found a lot of things which worked for me, but maybe because they were in a way trying to replace a reality instead of re 
of, of diving into how, how it can be used uh, in a reinvented or, or, yeah, something new created, which will not say, okay, now this is in the back or this is less, but this, there is so much, right? We, mm -hmm. There is so much place for creativity. If we can, mountains can go all the way to the stars. Uh, it's it's quite amazing. Um, I don't have an answer for it, but it is such a challenging thought. I, uh, very interesting uh, how it will work out. You have your alarm clock. Yeah, my alarm clock is going off. <laughs> 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 I thought I thought we have already spent sixty minutes talking, but I didn't think so. No, no. If I'm wrong, I'm not good at tracking time. But no, perhaps no, we, we have forty five fifty minutes, minutes left. Oh, okay, I'm good. That's great. We have fifty minutes left. 15 minutes left it to keep nice. on talking. So, um, there are a couple of subjects that have appeared in the conversation that I think that are interesting to address is that uh, one of them it was when speaking about NFTs and metaverse, like that perhaps these technologies are not uh, sustainable. And um, also thinking about um, the apocalypse and the and the landscapes that Ali paints uh, on and depicts in his work. I was thinking about that during this time, uh, we haven't been traveling, like we haven't been able to move, either to attend the festivals as an audience or, or as artists. And there are a lot of artists that even before the pandemic were asking themselves how sustainable it is to travel the world all the time in order to get your job done. I was wondering if during this time that uh, traveling was was not allowed, if you if you reflected on the subject about when the pandemic starts and everything starts rolling again, uh, should be we should we be more mindful about us traveling, moving, mm -hmm. uh, consuming energy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, because I certainly feel that there are many people who have who are um, more sensitive about the subjects, and I don't know, how about you? I'm very sensitive about the subject, and I'm super surprised, even after this pandemic, we can still fly with EasyJet for 20 euros. This is unbelievable. Like, how can this possible? Like, it's, it makes me even nervous. Like, this is stupid. Mm -hmm. but so you know what I mean? But like, uh, like, okay, so we talked about this so much, the, you know, the, like uh, what kind of carbon print that this produce, you know, like flying. Or like flying is an example, but you uh, brought this into the um, discussion, so that's why I'm mentioning it. Also like as a, um, you know, like the public is, like you cannot expect the public to be intelligent, I think, to make decision in majority uh, okay, I shouldn't actually take this easy jet to go to Italy because, you know, like it's 20 euros, but I'm creating that much carbon print. Uh, there is something like I'm asking, like, how is this even after such a pandemic still nothing being done on this? But who would do something about it? That's a big question, yeah. you know, but I'm just... I think the, uh, the government... It's also funny. Yeah, there's, 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 there's the like problem if is you that go they, there, they are not interested in taking part, taking decisions about that because. It's funny. I also capitalism felt is like that. But <laughs> <laughs> this is my point of view. But but I think that uh, in terms of uh, carbon print, we need to be more consciousness in general in in uh, about that and how it will change our lives in, in a near future. And I don't know, but I don't know the right answer, but it's good to make these, uh, these questions and to, sh to, to talk about, that, uh, uh, about this, sorry. Mm -hmm. Lea, I feel like <laughs> How do you feel about this? Oh, well, um, a lot of things. I think that, uh, yeah, pro if I understood the Cora correctly, yes. Um, that you do not have an answer, but like the awareness itself, which is also part, uh, so you are talking about just having the people aware of, yes, actually those easy jet flights or, or those easy 
easy, accessible things, it also very much, I think, relates to, to art and experiences and, and also our, uh, this, um, this period, this pandemic time, isolation that limited everything that we receive, if it is news, if it is entertainment, if it is um, communication, if it is documentation of our own lives, it's all in this little thingy, right? Everything is here, became here in this uh, isolation time. So it is all related, actually. And so now the traveling is, is able. So if it is about uh, car, uh, carbon uh, trace and, and all of this, awareness, for sure. But then again, the 20 euro are so successful because it is also very, because people do not have much money. We do not have much money. It became a thing because it is so cheap, but it completely blocked something. It, th that's why I think the awareness part, that if I understood you correctly, this awareness part, the fact that it is an issue, that this is not just, oh, look, uh, obviously I'll take this one because this yeah. is cheaper, or this is more accessible, or it is more easy. Just the element of the awareness of realizing, wait, but this is not just cheaper. It doesn't, it's not, it's not just graphs that one is higher, one is lower. There is this difference is major, and the, the awareness of why is it different, why is it cheaper, what is the effect of it, is, is major. For example, I can maybe make a uh, connection to NFT subject yeah. uh, with this. Like uh, Tarek was mentioning, so similar to him, I also released some, an NFT uh, on uh, Tezos platform. Um, and there is this Ethereum platform. So if you want to put out a work, mint uh, a work on, mm -hmm. as an NFT, you have a couple of options. Okay, the very basic option is this Ethereum platform where the whales are, where you can sell for bigger amounts, uh, blah, blah. But it's a, uh, it's a old system. Uh, it's a, there are better designs like Tezos proof of stake. So Ethereum works on proof of work, which will work on proof of stake, but not yet. So if you want to mint something there, it costs much, much more like hundred times, no, more than hundred actually, like thousand times more you have to pay because it's a super inefficient system which wastes energy and that's the cost of it. Some people still do it with the hope of selling and making money, more money, you know. But, you know, if you are uh, more like a, um, let's say, you know, more sensitive person about this subject, you choose Tezos because you pay 10 cents instead of 50 euros. And that money is actually going into energy waste. That 50 euro is spent for the crypto mechanism. There are the, the deeper discussions about the mechanism, but, you know, in the very basic. So in terms of flying, I would expect something like that. For example, if I'm, uh, let's say, uh, flying to Italy with EasyJet, actually it should cost me 2,000 euro because of the mm. uh, effect that it's creating, you know? Then the alternative should be 20 euro with, let's say, uh, sailing. You know, uh, <laughs> and, you know I'm making, a met I'm speaking with metaphors. Yeah, right sure, but also trains and, yeah, I get it. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, but there is another economic system going on in the background, probably, like as a, you know, a basic citizen, I don't know what's going on in the politics, but there might be some uh, money power relationships which makes it possible for this EasyJet to be 20 euro instead of 2,000 euro. That I don't know why, but I question. It is a very good question. Thank it is you. a very good question. <laughs> yeah. And actually, the panel today is more of the questions than about the answers. Yeah. And I think that it's good yeah. that we have lots of questions yeah. and no answers, because our brain is going to work yeah. very hard to answer them at some point. And I was also asking, because all, also Olaf brought up to the conversation that the metaverse is working in. It's like it has to, be, it has to consume uh, little resources because it, not, it needs to travel far and wide to other places in which they don't have such a powerful internet 
or whatever. So that we need to think about making things as accessible as possible for, e for everyone. And that technologies like this can help art travel to other places, whether if we can physically move or not. And I don't know about you, but I think that one doesn't replace the other. No? Yeah. And that we are living in a very exciting time. Where very confusing time also. Yeah. It's, so? it's so confusing. That's why it also with the answers and the question, what you just said, a lot of questions we have. Yeah. Not really answers, but because this has been like each and every one of us, it's been so confusing and it's not now, yeah, we have a festival and it's back to normal and yeah, party and no. No, it's so fucking confusing. See, and now that we see each other and we're all like, not yeah, party, because no. <laughs> Look what just happened and what is still happening. We had our alone moment, we're all I, I think so. We're all slightly depressed, confused, worried, nothing, what? No answers, so yeah, questions. <laughs> <laughs> questions? <laughs> we have all the questions, and so uh, as we have all the questions, I would like you to think each of you one question, all of. Leave us, because we are ending, so leave us with one question that we can bring home so we can think about the answer. Oh, do we have a microphone to take questions from the audience? Or answers from the audience? Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or answers for the audience, perfect, please. I have a question if you allow me. Yes. Uh, well, it's not about uh, only sustainability and carbon print. Uh, I have a question. Whoa. All the conflicting uh, positions and feelings we experience. I think uh, there's a lot to talk about this um, uh, festival happening in this building, in this shopping mall, for example. Uh, seven years ago, um, as Gezi <laughs> uprising happened, <laughs> it started as a protest, uh, a shopping mall being built uh, on the Gezi Park. And one of the protest uh, topics was actually a protest against this shopping mall. Th at that time, at that time, being built, not even uh, with a legal um, uh, building license, uh. Uh, so construction license. So, um, and we are here, of course. I mean, we should enjoy. It's better than nothing. But uh, we are all in a kind of complicity with the system. Uh, how do we deal with this? <laughs> and uh, the framework of this uh, panel is we are Europe. Uh, I do believe in Europe. I believe there's uh, it's another Europe is possible. But did we protest enough as capitalism was engraved in the constitution of the European Union, for example? Um, it's a question to all of you. Mm. How do we deal with this? On, on one hand, our dissent, our oppositional energies, and on the other hand, um, uh, our complicity with organizations which are um, destroying the ecosystem, or some of us with some uh, drug cartels, I don't know. Uh, we are all in ca some kind of uh, complicity. Uh, with the system, how do we deal with this um, conflicting positions? It's a mm. question. I think it, it's even uh, this capitalism is even engraved. By you asking it, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good start. <laughs> by so. you it's asking a, it's it. A, yeah, it is a question for me too. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. was organizing yeah, yeah. a dance fe festival with European money here, and uh, uh, it's we ha and we had to collaborate with some mm. institutions and uh, organizations and. It's a question for all of us. I think that the, this capitalism is, is deeply engraved in our education. Um, this old model that is 100 years old is still teaching us how to be successful in some way. And we need this big car and this nice house. And we need everything that is like being sold to us. Like uh, We're raised as consumers. Um, 
and, and I think education and the awareness is already a first, a first start. Um, maybe this whole two years that we had, behind, that, we, that, that we just passed, uh, gave us some time to think about this. And I said in my first introduction sentence uh, that I believe that you sometimes need a conflict before the consciousness rises. My alarm clock. Oh. That, so now it's going to start like a soundtrack of alarms yeah. if you did your homework <laughs> because it means that we have almost reached the end. We have a question from you, a reflection. Oh. Possibly we all think the same in a way. My response is that we have to live with our contradictions <laughs> in a way. And as Tarek was saying, you are wrong if you are, uh, if you are for NFTs, and you are wrong if you are against NFTs, or you are right. Like, um, there is no right or wrong. There are just things that well, there are is, in motion. There is. Yeah? I, th I, th I think there definitely is. I think nobody knows it. But there is somehow, or at least it's good to believe that there is, and to look for it, you know? Because otherwise you're like, yeah, who knows? Let's just yeah. continue taking our easy jets there is and, something and then just building shopping malls without licenses, you know? That's not uh, how you want to go either. Mm. Yeah. So this is the panel of the questions. Uh, I wanted to them to ask questions so we could reflect, but I think that we have explained a lot of things to reflect. Like we have many, many months until we, or less months, until we can meet again, perhaps at another panel, at another festival, maybe hybrid, maybe physical, <laughs> maybe in Olaf's metaverse, <laughs> or maybe in some other world or environment where we will get together again and perhaps share our reflections, our answers, and even more questions. Thank you very much. First of all, thanks to Cora, to Ali, Lea, Tarek, and Olof. And to Antonia. And oh. to Antonia. Thank you very much. <laughs> and of course, thanks to you for following you. the panel until the end. And I hope that you enjoy the festival. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>